Now, one of the wonderful things about polynomial functions is that they have some very useful properties. One is that polynomial functions are continuous when graphed, and that means that we will not have to lift our pencil whenever we trace the curve. So, in this case, if I were to trace the curve, I would have to lift my, lift my pencil from this branch to this branch. And that's because there is something called the vertical asymptote. I would also have to lift my pencil here because of a jump. Or, at the whole, I would have to lift my pencil. And the key thing is that a polynomial does not have any of these types of discontinuities. There are no vertical asymptotes, no jumps, no holes. But polynomial functions are continuous. They're also smooth. And what that means is whenever we graph, there are no, no sharp corners, no cusps, nothing like that. It's a nice smooth curve. So whenever we go to graph our polynomial functions, we, want, we will want to keep these two things in mind, that our functions are continuous and they are smooth. Now, just so you know, if you were to go on in math, the idea of smoothness is a mathematical concept that would um, require a more precise definition. So, whenever we are thinking about graphing a polynomial function, one of the first things that we will do is we will look at the end behavior. And the end behavior of a polynomial function is based upon the leading term. So we'll take the leading term, and that will have the same end behavior as a power function as the whole function. These other terms really determine what happens in the middle of the graph. The leading term tells us a lot about what happens at the end. Now, this also will tell you about some stuff that could happen in the middle, but right now what we care about is the power function tells us the end behavior. So, if we are thinking about end behavior, and we think about a power function that is y equals x squared, that's probably the easiest um, polynomial for us to think about. y equals x squared is an even degree because of the 2, and the leading coefficient is 1, so that's positive. So that means that our end behavior would look like it's going up on both ends. Now, likewise, whenever we think about an even degree with a negative, that would be something like y equals negative x squared. So it would go down on both ends. And then odd degree, positive leading coefficient, that would look like y equals x cubed on the ends, or x to the fifth. And then lastly, if we throw in a negative coefficient, y equals negative x cubed, it would reflect it. And so, notice I have a break here in the middle, and that's because end behavior is just that. It's what's happening at the ends, not in the middle. A lot of stuff can happen in the middle. So, Let's go ahead and determine the end behavior of this polynomial function. So first we need the power function that this graph resembles. So the power function is based upon the leading term when this is written in standard form. Well, if I were to write this in descending order, this would be the leading term. So y equals negative 7x to the 99th power is the power function. So now, based upon that, what is the end behavior? So as x approaches infinity, so as x moves to the right, what does y do? And as x approaches negative infinity, what does y do? So negative x to the 99th would fit this end behavior. And so f of x would approach negative infinity to the right, 
and positive infinity to the left. Now let's look at g of x in this example. Now this is not multiplied out. This is nowhere near standard form. So what we can do is we, we can pretend to multiply it out. So if we were to multiply this out, let's go ahead and take a look at what would happen. I have 3x, and then we have x to the second, and then we have 2x to the third, and so what would g of x be? It would be 3x times x squared times 2x, that's all going to be cubed, and then I would have a lot of other stuff that would need to get multiplied out and added. So this ends up being g of x equals 3x to the third times 8x cubed plus some miscellaneous stuff. And this would give us 24x to the sixth plus some stuff. So this is all g of x. So what's y? Our power function. For the power function, I don't have to worry about what the tail of the function is. I can just worry about the 24x to the sixth. And then my end behavior is based off of that. So notice we have a positive leading coefficient, and we have an even degree. So this means as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity, what do we do? Even degree means that they do the same thing on both ends and positive leading coefficient means they both point up. So as x approaches infinity, what's y do? As x moves to the right, so does y get bigger as x goes to negative infinity, so as we move to the left, what's y do? y goes up. Now, some other features of a graph are where you have turning points, and any function has a turning point where we go from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So notice that if we are going from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa, we have a turning point. We're changing direction. And whenever we change direction, that's going to yield a, a local extremum. That means that if we're going from increasing to decreasing, we're going to have a local maximum. If we go from decreasing to increasing, we would have a local minimum. Now, how many turning points could you possibly have for a polynomial function? If your polynomial has a degree of n, then you'll have at most n minus 1 turning points. So if your degree is 7, then you could have at most 6 turning points, which means that you would have at most 6 relative extrema. Likewise, we could reverse it. If you have n minus 1 turning points, then your degree is at least n. So if you had 98 turning points, then your degree has to be at least 99 could be more. Now this is just some of what our degree can tell us. Our degree and our leading coefficient can tell us about end behavior, and our degree can tell us something about our turning points.